Good afternoon, everybody. We're waiting for a few more people to get on, but we're going to get started, if that's okay with you all. And thanks for joining me. I'm here. Uh, uh, the FEMA director is on. Uh, uh, FEMA director Chris Welsh, she, she's on. And I'm here with, uh, with my senior advisor and uh, boy who knows Louisiana very, very well, man. And, and New Orleans uh, and uh, Cedric Richmond. And what I'm going to do is make a brief statement here and then go through and tell you what we're doing, but then hear from all of you if that's okay. I know you're busy as the devil. Uh, I know you've got a lot to manage in your states, uh, but uh, the fact is that uh, I, I want to hear from you. We both want to hear from you. And uh, we know Hurricane Ida had the potential to cause massive, massive uh, damage. And, uh, and that's exactly what we saw. We already know there's been at least one confirmed death, and uh, a number uh, that number is likely to grow. Um, and I've got uh, we've got a million people in Louisiana without power. And uh, for a time, uh, Ida caused the Mississippi River to literally change its direction. And some folks are still dealing with the storm surge and flash flooding. And there are roads that are impassable due to debris and down power lines. And we need people to continue to shelter in place if it's safe for them to do so. And uh, for those who have lost their homes, and uh, you know, states working with the American Red Cross have already opened 50, 50 shelters in the affected areas across the Gulf Coast. We've already begun search and rescue efforts, and we get folks uh, who out there who need assistance. Uh, and we're doing our, the best we can. More than 5,000 members of your National Guard have been activated from Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Texas to support search and rescue and recovery efforts. And FEMA has prepositioned literally millions of meals and liters of water. They're already prepositioned as well as other resources in the immediate area. And we've deployed more than 200 generators. And we already moved into the region. They've been moved in ahead of time. And uh, the administrator, Griswell, and her team at FEMA is working, getting more of those uh, into the area. And uh, we're in close contact with local electric providers to see what they need. They're all private providers. We don't control that, but we're doing all we can to minimize the amount of time it's going to take to get power back up for everyone in the region. And uh, we've been working with the electric sector throughout the night and, uh, and all day to day to assess and understand the full, the full extent of the damage. To accelerate the process, I've asked the, uh, the Federal Aviation Administration to uh, work today with Louisiana and Mississippi electric companies to authorize the use of surveillance drones to assess Ida's damage to energy infrastructure while ensuring those flights do not disrupt aerial search and rescue uh, operations. And I've also asked the Pentagon and the Department of Homeland Security to immediately make available any satellite imagery that can assist in assessing the damage in your states and cities and parishes. Local utilities are going to soon begin restoration work, including prioritizing getting transmission lines uh, into New Orleans uh, and get them back up and running. A lot of them have been taken down. More than uh, 25,000 debris crews uh, and linemen from at least 30 states are rolling in to support you. Some are already prepositioned pre and close and hopefully are already underway. But we need to be prepared uh, and uh, uh, that, that, that we're about as prepared as we could be for the early stage of this. And there's a lot more to do. We also know a lot of people lost their cell phone service if their particular carrier tower is down or damaged. So this morning, the Federal Communications Commission has worked with the cellular providers to initiate their cooperative framework agreement. That agreement allows customers on one line uh, with, with one provider to go to another provider if that provider is down. So it allows customers to use roaming access carriers to any of the carriers that are up and running. And that means you should be able to get a signal no matter who your carrier was or is. The main thing I want to make clear to all of you is we're providing any help we, you, that you're going to need. And so I've got, uh, as I said, I've got my senior advisor, Cedric Richmond, here with me. 
You all know him. He's a New Orleans native. He's a congressman of Louisiana, was a congressman of Louisiana's second district for 10 years. He knows the area. He knows the people and, uh, and uh, he uh, who have been affected by Ida. And he knows how to get things done in government. While FEMA is our lead uh, for on the ground response, if there's something you need, needs my attention, Cedric's your direct line direct line in the White House throughout this recovery, and I mean that. Whatever you need, go to Cedric. He'll get to me. We'll get you what you need if we can. The people of Louisiana and, Mil and Mississippi are resilient, and but it's uh, in moments like these that we can certainly see the power of government to respond to the needs of the people if government's prepared and if they respond. That's our job if we work together. The folks get knocked down. We're there to help you get back on your feet. The most important element, though, is coordinating all the branches of government, state, local, and federal. And that's what we're trying to make sure that we tried to do it before this hurricane hit. That's why we've begun working together. Uh, we're we're going to stand with you and the people of the Gulf as long as it takes for you to recover. And uh, so I'm not going to turn this over to, uh, uh, to John Bell, Governor Edwards uh, of Louisiana. And, Governor, give us your assessment of what what you have, what you're seeing out there. Tell me what you're hearing and what your team on the ground and anything you need that we haven't gotten to you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. And uh, you couldn't 